previously on The Sean Ryan Show. I had this drive to make sure that the Franklin Scandal got published. I read that there were other girls that knew about Epstein, but he wasn't indi- that that grand jury hadn't indicted him on a single count of uh, child molestation. I started investigating, and um, I ended up with Epstein's blank book. Where did you start your investigation? I just, I started calling uh, people that were involved. I, like I called Michael Ryder. Was he part of the cover up? He was part of it getting exposed. Okay. Yeah, he was the, he was like Mr. Stand-Up Guy and all this. I mean, if it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't be here talking. People speculate that it was Israeli, not American. But here's the thing about that, and I try to explain it to people. There's no way that American intelligence is going to let Israeli intelligence compromise American politicians without getting a cut of that intelligence. There's just no way. Well, maybe. I mean, why wouldn't they? Maybe that, I mean, if Jeffrey Epstein has blackmail on literally all these powerful people. Well, here's here's what happened. Okay, so um, when that... State grand jury, you didn't indict Epstein on on any counts of child abuse. Michael Ryder of the Palm Beach Police Department was just livid. And he went to the feds and he said, you guys have got to do something about this. And at at a certain point, the feds accumulated a list of 36 victims. I've I've got the list. Thirty. The, the feds had a list of 36 victims. Alexander Acosta was the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Florida, Miami. And he was told that not to go after Epstein, that Epstein was intelligence and it was above his pay grade. Now, he said that when, he became uh, secretary of labor under Trump. And when the Trump team was vetting him, they asked him, why didn't you go after Epstein? And he said, well, I was told that Epstein was intelligence and it was about my pay grade not to go after him. And it, it, it has come out that he said that and he's never denied saying that. So he was told Epstein is intelligence and you need to back away from him. And that's exactly, and, and so when we're talking about power, this is a U.S. attorney. There's two people constitutionally that can tell a U.S. attorney to back down in the United States of America, the president and the attorney general. So that's the kind of power that Epstein was tapped into, that a U.S. attorney could be told to stand down. Wow. So was the, was, what was his name, Lesnar? Les Wexner. Les Wexner. Was he the... Was he the gateway to all the other powerful people that Epstein had intertwined into this web of, of elites? I think that he was one of the gateways. I think that Epstein probably had multiple gateways, um, like Leon Black, head of the Apollo Group. Uh, Epstein got $156 million from him. Um, and how did that happen? Well, Leon Black just happens to be in Jeffrey Epstein's black book. Um, Glenn Dubin, another billionaire. Um, He's actually circled. So what happened was the house manager ripped off Epstein's black book. This is how I ended up getting it. Um, The house manager ripped it off and he tried to sell it to one of the attorneys that was launching civil suits at Epstein. And then the attorney called the FBI and the FBI did a sting. But he circled a bunch of names that he saw had been involved with Epstein. Epstein circled them or the no, house no, the, the house manager did. Okay. So um, Les Wexner's name had definitely circled. Um, uh, Bill Richardson's name is circled. Bruce King's name is circled. Uh, Glenn Dubin's name is circled. Uh, George Mitchell, the former majority leader of the Senate, his name is circled. Marvin Minsky, a famous uh, uh, scientist at MIT, his name is circled. Um, and actually, and, and a number of these people come up in depositions, a victim's deposition when she names names. So these names are popping up all over the place yeah. and it's all sinking up. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, and uh, one of the circled names is Ahud Barak, the former prime minister of uh, Israel. 
So, any presidents' names in there? Um. Well, actually, uh, Epstein has, I believe, twenty-four contact numbers for Clinton. And it's very obvious that Epstein was providing girls to Clinton. I mean, when Clinton was president, Epstein was going into the White House with girls, with women. I don't think that they were minors, but Epstein was definitely delivering women to uh, Clinton when Clinton was in the White House. What's with the painting? Do you know the painting yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, with Clinton in the blue dress. I, you know, it's... What just, is that? It's Jeffrey Epstein's perverted sense of humor towards Bill Clinton, I guess. I, I'm sure that Clinton probably never saw it. <laughs> what about, what other kind of paintings were there? Um, Was anybody else we know? No, nothing like that. Okay. Yeah, nothing like Bill Clinton in a blue dress, which kind of is a frightening thought. <laughs> is that the, <laughs> yeah, we'll put it up on screen. It's yeah. a great painting. Yeah, well, it's a very good painting, yeah. But, uh... I, mean, I don't know why you'd want that painted, but um, keep going with the black book. There's, <laughs> I have so many questions that have. Well, you know, with the black book, um, so I got the black book, and like I had direct contact information to Bill Clinton, or you know, Mick Jagger's name was in there. Um, you know, the Kennedys, there was a Rothschild. I mean, uh, uh, Soros is uh, actually Soros's nephew who's kind of taking over the Soros empire. He, he was, he circled in the Black Book. So how many names are in the Black Book? Mm, I would say a couple hundred, 200, 300. I mean, I'm talking like people that, uh, that Epstein did business with, but then there's also the names of probably about 150 victims too. So what, so if you had to describe the black book, how would you describe it? I mean, was it handwritten? Was it typed? No, it was, it was, it was typed out. Um, it was, uh, it was Epstein's, um, basically all the connections that Epstein, Epstein had made. It was just a Rolodex of people. Yeah. And, um, and like, a thing that kind of indicates guilt, and I'm not saying that categorical guilt, but it indicates guilt, is the more numbers that Epstein had for you. Even if you weren't so, like George Mitchell was named by a victim as a perpetrator. Who's George Mitchell? He was the uh, head of, he was the Democratic um, head of the, the Senate. And when the Democrats, this is in the 1990s. When the Democrats had the major, he was the majority leader of uh, of the Democrats. So he constitutionally um, was the president pro tempore, um, which makes uh, uh, so if the president goes and the vice president goes and the speaker of the house goes, then the majority leader of the Senate takes over. So constitutionally, he was the fourth most powerful man in the country. And Epstein has like seven numbers for him. And then that girl came forward and said that she'd been molested. And, you know, here's the thing about this, though. You know, some of these guys, I mean, some of them are creepy. Like Alan Dershowitz is creepy. Les Wexner is creepy. Um, but George Mitchell, he looks like a benign grandfather. You, I mean, I believe that that victim and then Epstein was obviously doing business with him. He had like seven numbers for George Mitchell. But he, I mean, he doesn't look creepy. It's weird. You know, some of these guys are very creepy and they don't look creepy. A lot of them look creepy, but some of them just don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, was there any notes or annotations or anything beside the names? Or was it literally just like a phone book, a name, and then whatever numbers they had for them? Yeah, numbers. Okay. And then, and then Alfredo Rodriguez circled the ones that he had witnessed. In Florida, taking part. Was it all men? Um, Courtney Love's name is circled. And I think Naomi Campbell's name might be circled, too. Did, were there any boys that were victims? Or was it all women or young Okay, girls? so I have heard of boys, but I've yet to find them okay. at, at this point. But, I, but I've heard of them. Are the victims... 
Let's talk about what it was like when you talk, when you spoke with some of the victims. Were they were they eager to get information no. out? Were they no. were they scared? Were they, they standoffish? They were, they're, they're, they're scared. I mean, in this scenario, you've got Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell saying, you know, if you talk, you're going to die, mm-hmm. and then you see all these extremely powerful guys. You see the Prime Minister of Israel, or you see Bill Clinton. I mean, you know, these are people at the apex of power. Mm -hmm. And you're, and Epstein and Maxwell have told you, if you talk, you're going to die. And then you see these powerful guys, you're you're terrified. What about Bill Gates? Um, Okay, so now here's what's interesting about Bill Gates. Um... Our mainstream media, which has been very lackadaisical, uh, Irene Jeffrey Epstein, said that they met in 2011, I think. So, but there was an actually an article from the Evening Standard in the UK from 2001 that said that Epstein and Gates were doing business in the 1990s. So, chances are, if that article is correct, um, Epstein and Gates knew each other like approximately 20 years before our mainstream media. Our mainstream media has just washed this up, cleaned it up. Um, it's it's pretty disgusting. Well, don't quote me on this because, uh, I mean, I, I think all of mainstream media is yes. completely corrupt. Doesn't matter if it's on the right side, doesn't matter if it's on, on the, the left, left side. There is no middle side. But, um, you know, I, I believe it was an ABC correspondent that – got fired, who came out and said that she wanted to cover the story, and right before she went on to cover it, it was, hey, cut it. We're not doing this. Yeah. We're not going to cover it. And and um, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Did that happen? I mean, that's you the, only, what, the it, only one that I've seen that's actually public. Um, but, it could have happened in other situations, um, but it's difficult to know. I mean, because again, what we're talking why why are people covering up for Jeffrey Epstein? Because they don't want to lose what they have, and they're afraid of not getting what they want, and 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 that's a strong motivator for people, a very strong motivator. Mm-hmm. Their their mortgage payments, their car payments, the payments for their children's college. Um, these are very strong motivators for people not to do their job. Because in Epstein, we see a lot of people not doing their job. And they're afraid. They, they don't, they do, they're not like Michael Ryder, the chief of the Palm Beach Police Department. They're not like him, who, who, who's going to do what's right. They're going to they're gonna weigh this. Man, I feel like this country used to be full of people who do what's right. Ooh, and uh, and they're just, out there. We just have to, we just have to start collecting them, getting them together, yeah. giving them one voice. I, I believe that there's enough people that are out there that really want to do the right thing, um, but the, the, they haven't been offered a, a modality to do that. And that's why Epstein Justice, this organization that I've started, is so important because we want to start getting the message out to people. And say it's all right to come forward. Um, actually, it's our duty to come forward. Our government is aiding and abetting child trafficking in the case of Jeffrey Epstein. And like, let's say someone lived down the block from you, and you knew that they were aiding and abetting child trafficking. I mean, you would never trust them. You would never let your kids near them. And here our government is aiding and abetting child trafficking. I mean, so how can we trust our government? We cannot, we've reached a point where we cannot trust our government. If, if our government is that corrupt, we can, we can no longer trust the government. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a, if our government is that corrupt. I it's, think it's a, our government I mean, is, that is that corrupt, corrupt. in multiple arenas. And, but here's the thing. With Epstein justice, if we dig down into Epstein, we will come across the cesspool that I believe is contaminating other large parts of the government. 
And then that's where we can make meaningful change at that point is we have to, we have to make the, sure that the government indicts those perpetrators, indicts those procurers, and tells us why, tells the American people why it covered up Jeffrey Epstein. Let's go back to the victims. I, was, I got sidetracked there for a minute. So it's, were any of the victims eager to be forthcoming? with? No. No. Um, every victim was, and I've gotten to know a number of them. They're, they're reluctant to talk. Were, the, were any of the victims, how long did it take to get names out of them? Um, a while, you know, it's, it's like anything else where you've got to develop trust, but I've done this before. I've, I've done it actually quite a bit at this point. I mean, not only the Franklin scandal, but I've talked to lots of victims. So I've got a track record out there. You know, if here's a guy that does the right thing, that, that investigates this and does the right thing. So that's, and there was an Epstein victim that actually read the Franklin scandal. So um, she realized that, you know, I was very uh, concerned about this and, 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 and really willing to uh, do whatever it ta takes to, to get this out there, to get this information out there. So she was very, I mean, she offered me names. And then I've gotten to know others um, that, have also offered names too, um, but they don't. You know, it's these these were little girls, man, that were terrorized, and Epstein and Maxwell were, you know, they were they were vicious to these girls. I mean, not even. I mean, some of these guys that that were, you know, were violent, but Epstein and Maxwell were just. Mentally vicious. In what ways? To these girls. Oh, man. You know, they would make one girl, like, stand on a scale in front of a bunch of other girls at the island to make sure that, you know, I mean, the mind games that were played. I mean, like, some of these girls that ended up at that island, they didn't even know. I mean, like, uh, Juliet Bryant, she was in South Africa. And she met someone who knew Epstein, and then all of a sudden she was on a trip to watch Bill Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein and Kevin was Kevin Spacey um, in South Africa. Bill Clinton was going to deliver a message in South Africa. And then someone with Epstein said, you know, you're beautiful. Let's make you a model. Come to New York. So she comes to New York, and then the day that she arrives in New York, she gets a call I, I believe it was from Sarah Kellen, who should also be doing multiple lifetimes in prison, um, saying, we're going to the island now. Um, pack your stuff, we're going to the island. And then, so she gets on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. She, she'd been in New York, she hasn't been in New York for a full day. She gets on Jeffrey Epstein's plane, and then they're flying to the island, and then all of a sudden, Jeffrey Epstein has one of the girls perform oral sex on him in front of all the other girls. And what's she going to do? I mean, you know, here's a terrified young woman who is, you know, 35,000 feet up in the air going to an island. I mean, what is she going to do? She's never been in anything like this before. She's terrified. And that's the viciousness. So was it... Was it uh was it like a kidnapping? Were these women kidnapped? Could they go home at the end of the day? Or were they stuck on this island and his other properties? I mean, how well, the, I what mean, was the, the living they dynamic? Could, they could go home, but here's the thing. It's like, you know, cults. Cults pe keep people tethered mm -hmm. to that organization. Um, like the Unification Church or the Hare Krishna, um, heavens, I mean, these, these cult leaders, you know, there's a very charismatic person there. So these girls, I mean, some of them are like one and done and they're out of there, but a lot of them, 
you know, they're, they're, well, we're going to pay for your college or we're going to make sure that you become a famous artist or we're going to make sure that you become a famous actress. I mean, this, I mean, none of all these carrots were dangled in front of these girls Mm -hmm. and, and these girls thought, well, you know, if I, after they'd already been indoctrinated, you know, they thought if I just endure this a little bit longer, then they're going to give me this or I'm going to get that. But that, none, of, none of those promises ever materialized for any of those girls. It was, uh, and, and that's the mind game of it, too, is vicious. I mean, every, uh, when it had anything to do with Epstein and Maxwell, it was just categorically vicious to these girls. Whether they were being pandered to dirty old men or, or men that liked to beat them up, um, and just the mind games with Epstein. I mean, being flown, you know, coming from South Africa to New York City and, be, and being in New York City for less than a day and then being told you're being flown to the island and then all of a sudden you're on this island and what do you, you know, you're, you've got no choice really. I mean, how do they, how do they, how do some of the victims describe daily life on the island? Hellish. Hellish. I mean, they, they had to sleep in like a dormitory and then they would be called for. And, um, and then sometimes like with one of them who was ostensibly having weight problems, they would be, uh, just ridiculed in front of the, the rest of the girls. Just humiliated. Yeah. How many times a day would they have to perform sexual acts? It all depends on um, who who was there. And then they were expected to perform on Epstein, too. And however many times Epstein wanted them to perform. Um, so, yeah, it was... I mean, once you were there, I mean... And a number of very powerful people were on that island. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and these girls knew that. Uh, Sergey Brin, one of the founders of Google, was quite fond of Jeffrey Epstein's island. And, uh, but there were other people other than, than Sergey Brin. There was a lot of... Uh Hollywood celebrities as well. Well, there correct? were Hollywood celebrities. Um, Epstein was more into uh, politicians and power. I think um, it, people know about Hollywood Babylon, but they don't know about Sodom and Gomorrah on the Potomac. But um, with, with Epstein and also with the Franklin scandal, I mean, they pandered kids to uh, Hollywood people. But they were primarily focused on financial people and political people. Interesting. Interesting. But I'm. But here's the thing with Hollywood. I mean, there's plenty of uh, freaks that are pandering girls to people in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. We just we just talked to Jim Caviezel a little bit about that. I'm hoping to talk a lot more about that with him in the future. But um, let's take a quick break. Sounds good. I have to go to the bathroom again. My, my, my prostate says the size of a softball is. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. I want to tell you about this business venture I've been on for about the past seven, eight months, and it's finally come to fruition. I've been hell bent on finding the cleanest functional mushroom supplement on the planet, and that all kind of stemmed from. The psychedelic treatment I did, came out of it, got a ton of benefits, haven't had a drop of alcohol in almost two years. I'm more in the moment with my family. And that led me down researching the benefits of just everyday functional mushrooms. And I started taking some supplements. I found some coffee replacements. I even repped a brand. And, you know, it got to the point where I just wanted the finest ingredients available, no matter where they come from. And... It, it, it got to this point where I was just going to start my own brand. And so we started going to trade shows and, and looking for the finest ingredients. And in doing that, I ran into this guy, maybe you've heard of him. His name's Laird Hamilton and his wife, Gabby Reese. And they have an entire line of supplements with all the finest ingredients. And we got to talking. It turns out 
they have the perfect functional mushroom supplement. It's actually called Performance Mushrooms. And this has everything. It's USDA organic. It's got chaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, miyataki. This stuff is amazing for energy balance, for cognition. Look, just being honest, see a lot of people taking care of their bodies. I do not see a lot of people taking care of their brain. This is the product, guys. And so we got to talking and our values seemed very aligned. We're both into the functional mushrooms. And after a lot of back and forth, I am now a shareholder in the company. I have a small amount of ownership and I'm just, look, I'm just really proud to be repping and be a part of the company that's making the best functional mushroom supplement on the planet. You can get this stuff at LairdSuperfoods.com. You can use the promo code SRS. That'll get you 20% off these performance mushrooms or anything in the store. They got a ton of good stuff. Once again, that's LairdSuperfoods.com. Use the promo code SRS. That gets you 20% off. You guys are going to love this stuff. I guarantee it. If you like spice, I got to tell you about this new product I've been checking out. It's called Firecracker Farm Hot Salt. I've been putting this stuff on my steaks. It is the perfect amount of heat. You basically put it over top, comes in these cool push grinders, push the button. Some hot salt comes out. The flavor is incredible. It's not too hot. What I really like about Firecracker Farm, other than the flavor, is it's a small family-owned business. It's just Alex and his family. They've gone all in on this one product. And here's another cool thing. They donate to organizations like Operation 300 and the Pie Pitter Foundation. Once again, the flavor is seriously amazing on everything you put it on. You can go to firecracker.farm slash Sean. You're going to get 15% off your first order. Ladies and gents, like I said, this is a small family-owned business, so supplies go fast. Once again, that's firecracker.farm slash Sean. Check them out. All right, Nick, we're back from the break. We're talking about some of the names in the Black Book, and there there have been a lot of names that have been released uh, by, by different sources. Maybe it all came from you originally, but... Um, was every name in that book guilty of partaking in in, in sexual activities <clears throat> with, with 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 minors? No, there were a number of people in that book that were not. That book was just a book of all of Jeffrey Epstein's contacts, and stolen by the Alfredo Rodriguez, who was the house manager, and. But a lot of the people, I mean, that was Jeffrey Epstein's thing. I mean, his thing was making money and molesting children. I mean, that was, so if you're in that black book, I mean, it's, and, and Jeffrey Epstein's relationships were all utilitarian. I mean, he, he wouldn't, if you couldn't help him make money or molest children, uh, he wouldn't have anything to do with you. So... A lot of people in that black book are there for making money or they're prestigious. Um, Do you think there's anybody that has been painted in a negative light because their name was in that black book that possibly maybe shouldn't have been? Um, I mean, it seems like anybody who's associated with this guy, you know, I've seen pictures of of celebrities and presidents and, and with him at parties, but I mean... You, and people get outraged, you know, and, and, but I mean, when you go to parties, I mean, it's, it's easy for anybody to just to snap a picture of you standing next to whoever, you might not even know who they are. And so, and so I'm just curious if there's anybody in particular that you think that has been, has been defamed because of their association with them, maybe, maybe not even realizing who he was. 
When people ask me that question, I, I think of that Beatles line, see how they run. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> according to everybody who's been interviewed in that book, no one had anything to do with Jeffrey Epstein. Good point. Good point. I mean, like, oh, you know, I met Jeffrey Epstein six years ago at such and such as party, and mm-hmm. I don't know how I ended up in that black book. I mean, that's what everybody's going to say, or most people are going to say. Um, Alan Dershowitz, who was quoted as having a friendship with Jeffrey Epstein and Vanny Fair, article, I think from 2002. Oh, yeah, I barely knew. And he's on Jeffrey Epstein's flight manifests, and he just talks about how much he loves Jeffrey Epstein and how Jeffrey Epstein reads all his books and... Oh, yeah, I I think I saw Jeffrey Epstein in 2015. I mean, these people are obviously lying. Mm-hmm. I mean, they want to do everything they can to distance themselves. And, and Jeffrey Epstein is the same as, like, Craig Spence uh, in the Franklin scandal. Everybody who was anybody came to Craig Spence's parties. And Craig Spence is quoted as saying, well, how will they deny that they ever came to my party? And I'm sure that Epstein, I've I've heard that Epstein had said something like that. Well, how can they deny that, you know, that I didn't, because I, I, I was with the elite of society. So where is this, where is the black book now? The FBI has it. The FBI did a sting. Alfredo Rodriguez, um, we talked about a little bit earlier, he wanted to sell the black book to one of the attorneys that was launching civil suits at Jeffrey Epstein that was representing some of the victims. And he called the attorney, and the attorney called the FBI, and the FBI did a sting. And so the FBI has a black book. I was fortunate enough to get a copy of it. And um, and then I, that was the copy that I released in 2015. So okay. the FBI has the black book. They've done nothing with it. Well, no one's... Here's uh, Epstein's... Um, when the when Epstein got taken down uh, four years ago, um, the FBI opened his safe, and he had hundreds of DVDs, uh, and I'm sure a bunch of them had to do with compromising. And then he was, I think, he was also into child pornography too. So we have no idea. So they have all the DVDs. They have all the DVDs. They have the black book. They literally have every they, they have everything. everything. They, they and nothing it. is happening. What's the, your opinion of the FBI nowadays? Well, I mean, it's in in this case, it's obviously unbelievably corrupt. The FBI knew Okay, so the FBI knew about Jeffrey Epstein in 1996. We know that for a fact. Maria Farmer who was assaulted by Jeffrey Epstein and her sister was assaulted by Jeffrey Epstein went to the FBI in 1996 and told them about Jeffrey Epstein. Now, and it's amazing. Think if the FBI had acted on Maria Farmer's information. Think of all those girls that could have been saved. But I don't even know why anybody who has... I, I, I can't even imagine applying for a position at the FBI nowadays. Well, I don't understand what they do, and I don't understand any, any red-blooded, what, whatever, any, anybody with an ounce of integrity in this country, I do not understand what the f*** they are doing working for the FBI. I, I, I don't know what they do now, and, you know, except cover-ups. They do a lot of cover-ups. I have met some decent FBI agents over the years. I mean, I have. Who are they serving? Um, I don't know. You know, that's what, like, you think you're doing something for the better, like, for the, for the, for the good of the country? It's, but, but uh, but we're talking, you know, we're talking the Department of Justice and the FBI together. I mean, so the FBI had hundreds of DVDs of Epstein. Um, I'm sure a lot of them were compromised DVDs, and I'm sure a lot of them were just child pornography. Um, so they've gone into a black hole. I mean, it's, you know, and, we talked and, earlier, and it's it's these guys, oh, they're worried about their mortgage and their car payment and yes. this and that. And it's like, sell your f-ing car, get a smaller house. What and, what and, expense and, are you willing to and do the cover right these f-ers up for? You know, there's kids being raped. It's uh f- your car it's get a new job but you know 
people do not think that way. They, like I said, they're afraid of losing what they have or not getting what they want. But now this is interesting. So when Epstein died, they said that the case was closed. So I did a Freedom of Information Act request. I didn't ask for the DVDs. I asked for reports on the DVDs. That was my FOIA request. And I eventually got an email back saying that the case was ongoing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, will, I, don't, I don't know if those reports on those DVDs will ever come out. It would be great. I mean, then we'd, we'd be able to get a lot of answers. It's up to our government. Our government needs to get honest about this. And until it does, I mean, I mean, we're going to be governed by the cesspool that we're currently being governed by. Uh, people that aren't concerned about doing the right thing, they're concerned about their money and prestige. And you, you see this, it, I mean, it's a historical trend. I mean, like the Catholic Church, Penn State, you know, Boy Scouts, Money, property, and prestige. They will not, all those kids that were molested, all those kids, uh, molestations that got covered up, they were all covered up so those organizations could perpetuate their money, their power, and their prestige. And, and, and individuals are the same way. Let's talk about Maxwell. How did she play into everything? What was her role? Well, she was the uh, she was the one that was really hands on running the network, the logistics person. I had a uh, I interviewed an Israeli spy, Barry uh, Ari Ben Menashe, on my podcast, and you know he's a spy. It's difficult to know um, if he's telling the truth or not. But okay, so. Her father, Robert Maxwell, had a publishing empire, but he was also uh, a spy for Israel and Russia and the UK and probably the US. Um, and he had this huge publishing empire. And what he did was he went into the uh, retirement funds of his employees and, and stole them all. So Maxwell's dad was an Israeli spy. Yes. Who yes. was running logistics for Jeffrey Epstein. No, no, who no, no, no. Um, so he was a spy mm -hmm. for sure. And, and then he had a huge publishing empire. But his daughter and, and it, was running logistics for, for, Jeffrey, for Jeffrey Epstein. For Jeffrey Epstein, yes. Who so, has been named by <laughs> government officials that he, he's un touchable because he's an intelligence. Yes. So there's a there's a line there's right there. There's a nexus there. there. Yeah. And um, Maxwell had a yacht called Lady Ghislaine, which was named after his daughter, Ghislaine, who was his favorite child. And he jumped off one day um, and he, he had a very mysterious death, much like uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Now, the cover story on it is, is that, I mean, because it did come out, that he'd ripped off all these, the, the retirement funds of all these employees. I mean, millions of dollars. I mean, he destroyed all these people. Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy obviously didn't have a conscience. And um, Glenn Maxwell supposedly then came to New York to get away from it. And then that's where she met Jeffrey Epstein. Now, according to this Israeli spy that I interviewed, uh, Maxwell put, uh, uh, Robert Maxwell put Glenn Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein together. And they were together even before he died, before his mysterious death. Um, some people think it's suicide. Some people think it's homicide. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very strange death. So somehow Maxwell and Epstein got together. And the story is that Epstein had the money and Maxwell had the connections. Um, and I think that there's some, some truth there. And this, this guy was a spy for the Israelis. The UK, and and possibly the US, and I believe and, you named and, another one, and possibly Russia. Yeah, and are all these? Do all these countries have people involved in this trafficking ring? Um, with Jeffrey Epstein, it's really difficult to know. I mean, Jeffrey Epstein was active in Europe for sure. Mm -hmm. He was actually buying. 
I mean, we're not talking renting. He was buying young girls mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. buying them like 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 slaves. Yeah. And when you think about that, how evil that is. Mm -hmm. We've covered this in, in other episodes about um, how trafficking works. But I believe you mentioned something about um, were there members in the UK government involved or in within the royal family? Okay, so definitely uh, Prince Andrew was was part of. I mean, he was pandering. Epstein was pandering girls to Prince Andrew, and uh, who is a thoroughly repulsive human being. I mean, I did some research into him, and and anybody that ever worked for the royal family, Lowe's Prince Andrew. What was he into? What was, what was he, what was his deal? He liked underage girls. That was, that was his thing. But he, he, I mean, he's just a nasty, foul human being. I think a lot of the people in the royal family are probably nasty, foul human beings. I think Andrew is probably a little special that way. He's probably a little nastier and more foul than uh, his siblings because, um, just from, and this is very strange. So here's a guy that molests underage girls, but he has all these teddy bears. And his, um, the people, the butler, uh, or whoever takes care of the house manager where he lives, they're supposed to have the teddy bears on his bed in a certain way. And if the teddy bears aren't on his bed the way that he likes them, then, then he has a conniption. So um, he likes to molest little girls, and then he likes teddy bears on a, a certain way on his bed. So that's kind of, uh, and according to Andrew, he doesn't sweat either, according to the BBC interview. So, um, which really, I mean, there was that BBC interview where he attempted to do a quit himself, and he, he came across as such an idiot. I mean, you could tell that. It's, it's like um, Jamie Dimon with J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan just gave uh, Epstein's victims $290 million. Yeah. And there was a New York Times article uh, where Jamie Dimon was talking, and you could tell that the guy was lying. I mean, it didn't, it didn't take rocket science. To figure out. And then, you know, he's saying, of course, we had nothing to do with Jeffrey Epstein, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, there's this $290 million settlement. So um, obviously, these banks were integral to what Jeffrey Epstein was doing. And they knew, according to these lawsuits, these banks, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, they knew exactly what Jeffrey Epstein was up to. How do you think they were involved? Well, I think that some of the the executives in those banks, like Jess Staley, I mean, was were involved in Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile network. And and, I mean, why, and why are they going? I guess what and, I'm and, I'm and Diamond too. I'm I'm kind of. I mean, it's so if it, if if they sued J.P. Morgan and not the individuals. How was J.P. Morgan as a as a company involved in the Jeffrey Epstein, you know, sex trafficking ring, rather than just the key players that were? I mean, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, why wouldn't they, they go after the key individuals? The, and why did they why did they go after the company J.P. Morgan? Well, the argument that they made was that J.P. Morgan was cognizant of JP or of Jeffrey Epstein trafficking children and gave him the money to facilitate it. They gave him money to uh, to do other things, but with the money that JP Morgan gave Jeffrey Epstein that facilitated his child trafficking. I mean, do you think this was a protection were they protecting certain people's identity by 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 putting it to, into the company? Absolutely. Just Staley and uh, and and Diamond I mean, without a doubt. I mean, it's pretty obvious that when you look into them, they were uh, involved with Jeffrey Epstein. How were they involved? I think that they were probably involved in um, molesting young girls. I mean, that's my surmise on that. And, um, and according to internal documents that were... Uh, that the lawyers for the Epstein victims were able to acquire, J.P. Morgan definitely knew 
what Jeffrey Epstein was up to. Now, how would J.P. Morgan know that unless some of those executives were taking part in it? I mean, it doesn't make any sense that mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan would not know about it. So um, if the, you know, if those individuals, like I've just named, weren't involved with Jeffrey Epstein. Were those names involved in the lawsuit? Were they, were they mentioned in the lawsuit? They were mentioned, yes. Okay. But it wasn't, it wasn't explicit. Um, but they were mentioned, yeah. And then Deutsche Bank is uh, also um, the, same, the same type of thing. They were aware of Jeffrey Epstein. And um, they're going to give up millions of dollars too. I think they're only going to give up seventy-five million. That's it. Yeah. How many? How many victims is this going to be dispersed to? We don't. I, I don't really know those numbers yet. Um, but what's a what, what's a? The, there's multiple tragedies here. But one of the major tragedies is. $290 million isn't even going to dent J.P. Morgan. I'm, I'm well aware. I, it, I totally it, agree with you. That's it, nothing. It, I mean, it's, it's like you or me getting like a parking ticket. Yeah. Um, it's, so that's a tragedy. It's a tragedy that those executives are molesting these girls. It's a, it's, a, it's a tragedy that a number of people at those banks knew that those executives were molesting those girls, that those girls were getting molested. And it's a tragedy that they're only giving up $290 million. The whole, the whole thing is a tragedy. But here's the thing with that is it's these little girls. I mean, they're, they're the ones that are going to be scarred for the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. even if they get millions of dollars. I mean, if, if you talk to some of them, they're 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 damaged. I mean, they're going to be damaged. I mean, and I'm, I'm I'm not saying that you know because I respect them. The ones that I've met, I respect. I, I really you know care for them. I like them, but um, but they're there's a damage there. That I mean, they've they've got scars on their soul. I mean, when you rape an eleven year old kid, yes, there's nothing that's going to get them over that amount of trauma. No, and, and actually- uh, They've, You've ruined their entire f***ing life. And, and actually, if you meet a woman in South Africa who's 20 years old, and then you fly her to Epstein Island and she's forced to commit all kinds of things that she never would have otherwise, I mean, she's- you know, she's not going to she's not going to have like the maybe the psychiatric damage of an 11 year old, like with dissociation. But she's going to be damaged, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of the and, and that's the thing that the media, these girls and these young women were all of them were very damaged by this. And we don't hear about that in the media. We don't we don't. There's no cover stories of of these victims in the media and 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 the damage that they've had to endure. There, there's none of that. I mean, we're, we just hear salacious dirt that Jeffrey Epstein met Bill Gates in 2011 or that Jeffrey Epstein hung out with Harvey Weinstein here. And, you know, but it's just the, the, the media is just just giving us salacious dirt. They're not demanding for any kind of justice. Yeah. They're 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 just trying to save face by throwing a random piece of bullshit out about it like, "Oh yeah, we touched the subject." And you know, but I, I don't know if it's I mean it, it elicits a readership too. I mean, there's and and that's the thing what I'm doing with Epstein Justice is, and I got to say this, the media ha have just been ethical eunuchs about this whole thing. They, they, they haven't really cared about the destruction of all these girls, but they're keeping Jeffrey Epstein front page center. They're keeping him alive. He, they're reporting about him every day. So America, I mean, he's fresh in the minds. Now, if, if he had died four years ago, and the the media had just stopped completely reporting about him. I would not be able to 
to start Epstein justice because Americans would have forgot, but they've kept Jeffrey Epstein fresh in the minds of Americans. And there's enough Americans out there that are outraged. That's why um, Epstein justice is so important is we need to get Americans together and we need a truth and reconciliation committee. We need the perpetrators to be punished. And we also need to know why our government allowed perpetrators to molest underage girls. We, we need to know that. The government has to tell us. I have a pretty good idea of why, but we need the government to tell us that. That's what a Truth and Reconciliation Commission is about. Let's talk about Sarah Kellen, an associate of Epstein, and once looked at it being charged with similar crimes as Maxwell, but has never been arrested. I've never even heard of her. Sarah Kellen was, um, she was like, Maxwell's first lieutenant. And um, she did everything that Maxwell did. And she's a vicious, vicious woman. And actually, when the uh, Palm Beach Police Department was going to arrest Jeffrey Epstein, they, they had those five girls that had come forward that they had statements from. They were going to arrest Sarah Kellen, too. They, they felt like Sarah Kellen um, had participated enough that they were going to arrest her. Nothing has happened to Sarah Kellen. Actually, I called Sarah Kellen because I had the black book. I figured I'd, you know, I'd give her a call. And she just, uh, basically, she uh, complained to me about how the media had persecuted her. <laughs> did she have any, did she have any ties like Maxwell's father? Not that we know of. I think she just comes from white trash. And um, she, I, I mean, I'm sure that she sexually catered to Epstein at one point, and then Epstein said, well, you know, she's pretty smart and ruthless, so I'm going to use her, too. Why do you think they never went after her? They never went after any of the procurers, except for Max. The New York Times named six procurers. I mean, Sarah Kellen, uh, Nadia Marcinkova, Leslie Groff, uh, Haley Robson, they were all named by the, they're, they're right there in the New York Times, named. And how, if, if this was real justice, if there were real justice here, it would be like a RICO indictment, how, how the mafia was taken apart. You take the little, uh, the, the, the little fish, and uh, child trafficking is a 15 year to life sentence. So you indict Sarah Kellen on 10 counts of child trafficking, which would, wouldn't be that difficult. If, I mean, you could probably indict her on 20 or 30, but just indict her on 5 or 10. Have her look at, uh, you know, 5 to 10 lifetimes in prison. She's going to roll over on, on the perpetrators. Everybody's going to, anybody that's looking at 5 to 10 lifetimes in prison is going to roll over on the perpetrators. You could have done that with all these procurers, which are essentially pimps. Um, you could have done that with all of them. And they're right, and, and a bunch of them are named right there in the New York Times. And none of them have had any problems at all. And actually, Epstein paid them all very well. And they still have their money from, that they made from Epstein. Let's talk about Juliet Bryant. You've mentioned her a couple times during the Juliet interview. Juliet Bryant was a victim of Epstein. I talked to her. She was in. She was from South Africa, and um, she was with uh, Epstein. Flew her to New York, and she kind of settled in. And then they told her that she was going out to the island. Um, so. But she was in uh, the New Mexico, New Me Epstein's New Mexico ranch. And now I'm a little fuzzy, but she kind of passed out or went to sleep. And then she came to, she says, in a laboratory. And that there was a doctor that was harvesting, like in a hazmat suit almost, um, harvesting her ovums. And... I've always thought uh, Dolly the sheep was cloned in 1997. If you can clone a sheep, you can clone a human being. And 
actually, people are getting like their French bulldogs cloned um, for like $60,000. But it's estimated that you can clone a human being for $1.5 million. So, and, and, and I knew when Dolly got cloned, the sheep, there's got to be m- megalomaniac billionaires out there that are cloning themselves. There's mm-hmm. just, there's just got to be. And, and that Epstein crew, I would not surprise if uh, Juliet Bryant's ovums were getting harvested because those sick, twisted megalomaniacs are cloning themselves. You think that th- these people are cloning themselves? It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, what would, okay, so what would prevent you from cloning yourself? Uh, ethics uh, would be one thing, uh, but these people don't have any ethics. So, um, so then it's just a matter of money. And what's $1.5 million to these guys? Nothing. So, um, Unfortunately, there's going to be probably little Jeffrey Epstein's running around in 20 or 30 years. And <laughs> you know, that's kind of the, one of the last things we need. Didn't he actually talk about spreading his DNA? He did. And uh, he was also into transhumanism. So who knows what was going on there? I mean, I think... Like with Juliet Bryant's story where she felt like they were harvesting her albums, I think that 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 is, uh, Epstein, the cloning, the transhumanism, I think that that law enforcement, if law enforcement ever took this seriously, could dig there and would find out some very interesting stuff. What exactly is transhumanism? Transhumanism is like combining, um, like, being able to download someone's brain onto a computer chip, stuff like that. And um, now, granted, we're probably not that far along with transhumanism, but you need people to, uh, I mean, for transhumanism to go forward, we're going to need people to experiment with. Mm-hmm. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that was going on. Because here's the thing. When you're molesting little girls, I mean, there's there's no line in the sand of what you're willing to do and, and not willing to do. There's no ethics there. there there's no morals there. You're going to do whatever you want, whatever makes you feel good. And that's epitomizes Jeffrey Epstein and his crew. They're doing they're doing whatever they want, and they're protected by the uh, by the federal government. So they can do whatever they want. It's uh, pretty heinous. Nick, I'm just going to run through a couple of questions here. But sure. Why do you think the names on Maxwell and Epstein's list have not been publicized? None of them. On their list? Yeah. What, what list is that? On the, on the Black Book. Why do you think it's never been officially publicized by... Any of, I mean, you know, we hear about the Maxwell trial. Epstein supposedly killed himself, but and but well, nobody's coming. There's no, not one person has been charged with pedophilia. Well, I mean, that's that's our government. I mean. I mean, our government has done everything it possibly can to cover up all these crimes. And that's why we need a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I mean, we, the American people, have to force the government to actually pursue these crimes and then go after these perpetrators and then tell us why they're protecting these perpetrators. We need that, too. We need a why 
although I, I have a pretty good idea of why, but we need the government to tell us why so this doesn't occur anymore. This happened with the Franklin scandal, it's happened with Epstein, it's happened in a lot of different places. We have to make sure that our government doesn't cover up child abuse anymore, child trafficking. We have to make sure that our government has that fundamental level of decency to not cover up child trafficking. I mean, that should be a line in the sand that should never be crossed by our government. Do you think the government enabled Epstein to commit these crimes over the years? I mean, Absolutely. There are reports of, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't there reports of CIA directors staying at his New York townhome? Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, there was a, a lot of people that stayed with with Epstein. Um, actually, Woody Allen and Epstein were good friends to uh, ethical eunuchs. Um, there's pictures of Woody Allen and, and Jeffrey Epstein uh, walking down the street together. Like there's pictures of Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein walking down the street together. But what we have to do is make sure that the government pursues justice here. We cannot sit back and say, okay, yep, Jeffrey Epstein and all his buddies, we're gonna let them molest all these girls with impunity because they have power and they have money. We, we can't do that. I mean, this is a nation of laws. Laws have to apply to everybody, regardless of how poor someone is, regardless of how rich someone is. The law has to apply to everybody. This isn't about, it's, unfortunately, we live in a system that's, where it's often the best justice money can buy. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, the laws have to apply to everybody across the board. And what you get into a very dangerous area as far as a society when you say, well, this law applies to him, but it doesn't apply t to him. That's a, that's a, when you get into that type of uh, moral relativism, it's, it's very, very dangerous. And that's where we're at right now, is that type of moral legal relativism. Let's talk about some of the hidden cameras that have been were there hidden cameras at literally every property? Yes, we know about hidden cameras. Um, the, the first glimpse of hidden cameras came when the uh, Palm Beach Police Department executed the search warrant on Epstein's Palm Beach house in 2006. Now, Epstein had been warned that that uh, search warrant was getting executed, but he didn't get rid of all his hidden cameras because the Palm Beach Police Department found hidden cameras. Now, in his New York uh, digs and that huge townhouse he had, there was an actual room with multiple monitors. I, earlier, I was talking about Craig Spence of the Franklin scale had a room of monitors. Okay, so uh, Maria Farmer and also um, there was one other victim that was brought into the room by Epstein. And there were guys, as in multiple men, looking at the monitors. And, and the monitors had all the bedrooms and all the bathrooms. And uh, it was Virginia Gouffre and uh, who was also told about, who was also shown the room. So that's a conspiracy right there. I mean, you've got guys sitting in this secret room looking at monitors. I mean, that shows that there's people colluding with Jeffrey Epstein as far as like the blackmail. I mean, that's a, a smoking gun right there. But then his, the island was all wired for audiovisual blackmail. There was an article in Vanity Fair where um, Maxwell had said that there's blackmail involved, uh, or a friend of Maxwell's had said that about, um, and with New Mexico, yeah. It's uh, every, everywhere where Jeffrey Epstein pandered minors, there was, there was cameras. Where do you think all this footage is now? Do you think it's with the FBI? Do you yeah, think it's I with mean, the CIA? It, do you think it's... It's either the FBI or the CIA, one or the other. Do you think people are still actively... Who did the blackmail get passed on to? 
FBI or CIA. I mean, that now we're not talking. We're talking some dark, malignant corner. I mean, it's still got to be. I guess of, what of, I'm getting of, at of our is, intelligence. is it's still the blackmail is still being utilized by somebody. I mean, it's very oh, obvious yeah. it's a blackmail operation. So what I'm asking is, you know, Epstein's dead, supposedly, and so who's controlling the blackmail? It's that dark, malignant corner of intelligence that did the Franklin scandal, that oversaw Epstein. Um, there, there, there is some dark, malignant corner. I don't even. You, you really can't call it the CIA because it's. There's a lot of people on the, in the CIA that are are, are decent people, um, and you really can't call it the FBI because I do believe that there are decent people in the FBI too. But there's some dark corner of our intelligence that has that information. But what's troubling is that dark corner has the power to make a U.S. attorney stand down when only constitutionally the president and the attorney general can make a, a U.S. attorney stand down. So, so that dark corner of intelligence, that malignant dark corner of intelligence, harnesses a tremendous amount of power. But I don't think it's that many people. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, how many people can it be? I mean, how many, uh, how many people can it, I mean, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000? I mean. You know, I don't know. It's, it's, what's interesting to me is, is, you know, I've worked in operations where there's classified information and, and several of them. And, you know, the more people you tell, the more likely there's going to be a leak. And when we talk about the, you know, the operation, and I'm green to this, you've been digging into this for 20 plus years, correct? Yeah. And, um, and you know, you, you said it yourself, you've got pilots, you've got crooks, you've got yeah. really low level people that were involved one way or another. I mean, you have the people that were on, you have the people that were on the runway. It's, you know what I mean? That's that, that directed the plane to take off. You have mm -hmm. the pilots, you have whoever was cleaning the properties. You, you know, you have all these low level type people that, that know what's going on, but yet they've managed to silence all of them. And then you have, you know, all the way up to everybody that partook in it. That black book, I don't know how many names are in there. There's got to be a ton of them. You know, I've, I've seen. Different things. I don't know what's real and what's not anymore on the internet, so I don't want to give any sources. But you, I've seen documents that have lists of just names, lots and lots of names, and and those people are all silent. Then we're talking about four different countries that have been involved with Epstein. They're all silent, and and so it's it's. It's almost a miracle that more isn't out on this. Well, that's because just because there's so our, many people involved. Th th that's because our government has made sure. That's this this government though. It's and and actually, I think the Brits and the French have followed suit. I mean, Jean Luc Brunel, who was one of the pedophiles, that he ran a, a modeling agency for Epstein, and he was responsible for funneling uh, underage Eastern European girls to that Epstein network. Um, the French came after him, but he hung himself in a cell. So, uh, and then we know about certainly uh, Prince Andrew's role in Epstein. I mean, he gave Virginia Gouffre millions of dollars, or his mother did. I mean, it's kind of weird that he's getting bailed out by his mother still. He's 60 years old, but I guess that's how things work in the royal family. But anyway, uh, law enforcement isn't going to pursue people in the U.K., I mean, Jean-Luc Brunel, who hung himself in a, in a French cell, I mean, he, he, was, you know, he was instrumental to Jeffrey Epstein's network, but uh, the French don't seem to be interested in, you know, why he hung himself or you know, who he was facilitating. Um, so our, our government has done a real good job of making sure that there's no investigation. Do you think do you think he killed himself? You know, um okay, so I've talked to people 
that have been at that prison, and they say that there's no way that, um, especially because he tried to kill himself earlier. And he did where at that prison, and then they put him in. Uh, the, the, I've been told that there's no way if you're on suicide watch you can kill yourself in that prison. But I try not to get bogged down in that because that's not really the issue here. Whether or not he killed him. I mean, if he killed himself or didn't kill himself, I mean, that's just one more component of corruption. The really important issue is we have our government aiding and betting child trafficking. That is the issue that we need to take care of, um, not whether or not Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Um, we need to take care of the government has got to come clean, has got to indict these perpetrators, and it's also got to come clean why it's doing this. Well, I'm with you. I, I, do, I do think it's a big piece of the puzzle. I mean, like I said earlier, you know, the, the, the judge that they tried to assassinate, you know, I think they did they kill her husband and her uh, son? Her, her husband and her son were murdered, and then he uh, supposedly killed himself. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and, that, and then it was, that, and then, that, that and then it was done. There wasn't, there wasn't any mention in the news anymore yeah, about that was, any of it. That was, a, that was, the assassination attempt on the judge. That was about a twenty-four hour news cycle before that was launched. Yes, I'd love to get that judge on here, but um, I would too. I'd be very reluctant. I, I, I think that she'd be very reluctant to talk. <clears throat> but what do you think? I mean, what do you so? We know it was a blackmail operation, obviously. What do you think, you know, after everything you've dug into, what do you what is the blackmail operation? What is it for? Is it just power? Is there a specific agenda? It, and where I mean, we already have multiple lines of connections here with the US government, with the Israeli government, with the with the with UK, with, with France. You know, what is the, who's running this? Okay, so. Who is, I think what I'm getting at is it sounds like Jeffrey Epstein was an intelligence asset for, for an international intelligence asset. It's, it's possible, yeah. I mean, I think that the CIA was certainly involved uh, in probably Israeli intelligence too. It's the, I do believe, and, you know, I, I hate buzzwords and stuff like that, but you can call it the medical or the uh, military intelligence complex. Um, why do we spend so much money on the military compared to anybody else? Why do we sell far more weaponry than anybody else? Why does our government... Uh, uh, Kellogg, Brown, and Root in Afghanistan. That Afghanistan war went on for 20 years, and these private military contractors made billions of dollars. Um, DynCorp, another military contractor. DynCorp was actually trafficking girls, underage girls, in the Balkans. Uh, it got busted. There, there was a movie made about it with Myra Servino. Didn't DynCorp didn't skip a beat. That wasn't even a speed bump for DynCorp. I've never heard of that. Yeah. So this is the problem: is you've got the people at the upper echelon in the military, in the intelligence, and probably in finance too. That there's a collusion, and this is another reason why we need a truth and reconciliation commission. So, what do you think the goal is? Is it control? It's it's control and power. I mean, that's that's always been the goal for for any autocrat or immoral government is control and power. I mean, you have to be thinking about this as you're digging into this stuff. I mean, who who's the puppet master? I think that there are probably. Uh, I don't think that there's one single guy. I mean, I, I look at it as like the media. There's six corporations that control, it's estimated 90% of the media that Americans imbibe. Um, and they, have to, they, they all work it out 
I mean, they make sure that there's certain truths that don't come out. Um, and I think that there, there are probably groups of people um, that work the same way, that, that, that have the power. And, and I think that they're in the military, they're intelligence and probably finance too. And that's why our government, we need to know why. We, we need, the, uh, the American people need to know why Jeffrey Epstein's perpetrators aren't indicted and we gotta make sure that they get indicted. We've gotta know why the government is covering up so this doesn't recur. And, and who's it covering up for um, other, other than these perpetrators? I mean, these are, these are fundamental questions that the American people need to know. We need to know this about our government. We cannot let this just slide and think it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. That, oh, we'll, we'll just forget about this. And, you know, in 20 years, things are going to be better. I mean, our politics are really corrupted. Mm -hmm. And we ostensibly have a two-party system. But Jesse Ventura, the former governor of uh, Minnesota, he says it's just like professional wrestling. He said, we sound antagonistic, but that's just part of the script. We're getting paid by the same people. He said, politics and professional wrestling are basically one and the same thing. It's all theatrics. Yeah. The big uniparty. Yes. Yeah. And, and I've, I've come to believe that. I, at this point, I would, I haven't voted for a Republican or a Democrat for years. And uh, I mean, I'd, you know, I'd like to be able to vote for a Republican or a Democrat, um, but I, I don't trust any. We've got 435 representatives and we've got 100 senators. I'm not aware of any representatives. I'm not aware of any senators that have called for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission into the crimes of Jeffrey Epstein. 530. 35 federal legislators, not a single one, regardless if they're Republican or Democrat, has called for any kind of truth and reconciliation commission into Jeffrey Epstein. 535. I mean, that's pretty astounding when you think about it, that all our federal legislators are willing to let this slide. Well, the next one I have on here, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> I will. I'll put him on the spot. What am I missing? What's something I should be asking you that I haven't asked yet? Um, I just think it's really important that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that Epstein Justice, is embraced by enough Americans so that we can have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That is the only way that I think that we're going to be able to heal our government. Our, our government is, is, is sick. Our government, it, it, it's, it's a cancer. It's metastasized. And you, there, you fight disease. There's, there's, three, there's three critical stages of fighting disease. First, you need awareness of it. Then you need acceptance. And then you need action. So Epstein Justice, we, we have awareness we need the American people to accept how corrupt it is. A lot of them have, but we need, we need the American people in mass, and then we need action. Awareness, acceptance, action. So EpsteinJustice.com is a 5013C nonprofit organization yes. dedicated to establishing truth, exposing the corruption, and compensating the victims of Epstein. You can sign the petition and contact your representatives. Do you guys make it easy by chance to Well, actually, to we've got a, a form letter there, um, and people just have to put their name in and then and where, they're, where they live, and then it'll go, and then they just hit submit, and it'll go right to the representatives, the federal uh, representatives. Oh, so it's automatic. All yes. you have to do is yes. just boom, and yeah. then it, it gets to where it needs yeah. to go. The National Center on Exploitation. And you uh, put that gave, together? Gave us that you, software. Your, you and your team did? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, the, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation gave us that software. So that was awesome. And then what we have to do is just really press. This is, a, this is an issue that we just really have to press. And um, because every American knows, I mean, I think most Americans know that 
something is wrong with our country. Something is wrong with our government. Um, people, people know um, that. And I think that this is going to be our best opportunity to fix the pathological problems that are involved in our government at this point. This is going to yeah. be our best opportunity in our, in our lifetimes. I think the only way to save it is to get people running who don't want to run. The only guy that I know that I really respect and trust in there right now is uh, Eli Crane, you know, and uh, he's even voted against his own. What? How do I say this? I mean, the guy's even. I mean, he 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 voted. He votes for who? What the people that elected him want him to vote for? Well, and I he's mean, the be... only one in there that I know that does that. I mean, he voted against what he wanted to do because the people that voted at him said, we don't want that. We want this. And one against his own intuition, you know, and, and that's about, <laughs> I mean, you just don't hear that anymore. Epstein justice needs people like that. We, we need politicians that aren't corrupt. Um, we need people to come forward in federal law enforcement that aren't corrupt. Um, we need the American people to get behind this. And we really need to clean out our government. Anybody in our government that has anything to do with this really needs to, to, to leave. Yeah. And, and yeah, we do need new people. But we need, a, we need people coming in in a system that's not thoroughly perfidious and corrupt. Which is the system we have now of, of blackmail. That seems to be the checks and balances of our political system is blackmail. So we need new people in politics, but we also need them to come into a system that isn't uh, just categorically corrupt. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that's going to be extremely difficult to accomplish, but got to keep a little hope. So uh, you've got kids. Um, do we want our kids growing up in this world? No. I mean, people have to not only think of themselves, but they have to think of their children as, as growing up in this world. So it, it's important that we rectify this. Yeah. Well, Nick, I really appreciate you coming out and, and educating us on the topic, and I hope to see you again. I'm going to keep hitting this topic. So any new developments you have, please contact me, and I will be happy to have another conversation with you at any point in time about this subject because it's just enrages me. And thank you for having me. Uh, I enjoyed my tour of Tennessee. So thanks for having me. It's my honor. Best thanks. of luck to you. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.